Hey, Renee. <laughs> Today I wanted to chat about uh, 11 or 12 years ago. We had known each other and we were actually in a class together and we had noticed with each other certain things going on. And one of the things I noticed with you was you were getting irritated and you had talked with those in the class about being frustrated. Yeah. Uh, that a question was going through your mind and you weren't sure what to do with it. Yeah. And I thought that would be a good thing to bring up today. And it was, where was God when Renee was being abused? Yep. So can I tell the story? Yes. <laughs> Going to the background. Yeah. When we were in that class, um, actually we had done this class twice and it didn't come to mind the first time around, but second time around, this anger was just building, building, building. And it was all around this stupid question. Where were you, God? And um, as it was coming to mind, I was a little worried about asking it because I thought I'd offend God, to be honest. I thought that he would, you know, lightning bolt me or something. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what God's response was going to be. And I didn't know. I believed in wrestling with him, but I did, didn't know if it was okay to be angry with God or not. But it was there. It was, where were you, God? And so with your guys' challenge, I finally asked them, like, you know, I finally did it. Where were you, God? And he showed me. Up until that point, I thought he was this crepid little elf-sized, shriveled up man in the corner of my room every time that abuse happened to me in my bedroom. Um, I thought that was something too big for God to stop. And so my picture of God was of being limited, in chains, mute, bound, you know. Um, but when I asked that question, he showed up and showed me, he took, he showed me, I guess you call it a vision. He showed me a picture of here's where I was and took me back to an incident, took me back to my bedroom. I'm a little girl mm -hmm. and he's on my bed with me. Not as the abuser, but he was being abused while I was being abused. So what was being done to me was being done to Jesus' body as well. And then when it was done, the abuser left the room and I started crying. And my feet are hanging off, you know, the side of the bed. I mean, it was just such a vivid picture. Me as a little girl, feet dangling off the side of the bed. And then Jesus sits up and sits beside me. And he's crying while I'm crying, you know. It sucks to get abused, you know, and, and in that moment, it was just, it was probably every moment I would cry afterwards. Just why me? Why? And Jesus showed me that he endured every time what I endured. And he also showed me he was there to carry me through. Mm -hmm. to, to bring me to keep on living, I guess, you know, to to keep giving me life and to keep giving me hope and give me the ability to keep on going. And then the ending of this picture was of him just lightly putting his hand over my shoulder. So he's on this side of me and he's just lightly putting his hand over just shoulder to shoulder, not an offensive hug or anything like that, you know, especially after being abused, the last thing you want is anybody touching you. And it's just him showing me his comfort. Mm. That is, I was there, but here's where I was. I endured it, and I carried you through it. So that was my experience, and I didn't get lightning bolted. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it was okay to be angry and ask that question. As well yeah, as it was I, okay to ask that question. Yeah. So. Yeah. I remember probably about 18 years ago, I was studying God's Word, and um, it was a Bible study that was happening at church. And in the process, it was talking about how God was omnipresent and uh, past and present. Omnipresent. And it was like, wait a minute. And it clicked. Something inside of my head clicked. It was like, so he knows things before they're going to happen. Well, then why didn't he protect me? It was just a thing that went through my head. Why didn't he protect me if he knew these things were going to happen 
ahead of time. I would do that for my own children. So I would try to protect them, that type of situation. And that thought went through my head and it was like, hmm, wait a minute. And as I thought that through, I brought God into the conversation. And then I was remembering Genesis about how sin came into the world Hmm. and how man has a choice to do good or to do evil. Right. And how we're blessed to be able to have that ability to be able to choose that we're not made to be robots. I know that was explained to me when I first became a Christian. You know, (laughs) God didn't make us robots. We have to actually choose and say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because of that choice, some people are going to say no. And those people who say no into different areas of their life are going to end up hurting not only themselves, but others. Yeah. Your behaviors affect other people down the line. And so that's what was happening in my life when I was being abused was people were saying no to Jesus and wanting their own selfish desires right. and fulfilling those, which in turn hurt me. It helped me get a better picture. It helped me to understand it better. And though I would have rather, of course, it not happen. I'm so glad I do have the free will, the choice to love God or not love God, to choose Jesus, to not choose him. It's huge to me to be able to make this decision and to give love freely like that. It's horrible to be forced to love or that type of thing to somebody um, because that's not love. Right. (laughs) You can't force love type situation. But um, I, like you, realized he carried me through to the next area. He saw my hurt. He he bound my wounds and carried me forward. I was the one at times who didn't want to be bound. I didn't Mm -hmm. want my healing to happen. And I just didn't want to be touched. And I think he understood that too. Then he went ahead and did it at a slow pace, one that I could handle. And I'm thankful for that. Yep. One thing I remember hearing is Jesus will always be a gentleman. <laughs> he forces nothing upon us. And it's like you said, it's, it's our free will and it's our freedom he's given us. So I am grateful that he is a gentleman and grateful that he does reveal So where was God when we were both abused? He was there. He was our comforter. (laughs) He was there then. He was there the next moment. Mm -hmm. He was there afterwards, the next day, 10 years from that, to help us walk through the shame, to keep pushing us towards getting healing in those areas that we needed and giving us the strength to get up every day. The verse comes to mind. I don't remember what it is. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11. I could pull that up real quick. Sounds right. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Yes. That's what comes to mind. I have have that on my fridge. (laughs) I remember the first time reading that while staying at your house one time oh (laughs) and the word harm like Uh, it hit hit. like god is not a god of harm no yeah amen thank you god for that verse yes (laughs) jeremiah 29 11 well thank you for sharing you're welcome thank you for having me we'll talk again (laughs) bye-bye